Hello everyone, it's Gigabeef here, and today we're looking at the M1A, which I think of these days as the default 7.62x51 NATO rifle, simply because it's one of the few weapons in this category that still has good ways to access it ever since the vast majority got banned from the flea market. Before we continue, today's video is sponsored by Ridge Wallet, which is my favourite solution to bulky disorganised card holding. I swapped over to the Ridge Wallet itself and to the associated key case, which I use for my house keys and all of that kind of stuff quite a while ago, and I honestly couldn't be happier with it. Holds up to 12 cards, also blocks RFID as well. Now Ridge did actually send me a newer one which is the Basecamp Orange version which is super cool and much like the Tarkov namesake this one has actually got a full set of labs cards in it which is pretty fun and there's also a key case that goes with this too which works in exactly the same way flips them out out like this super easy to install those in there now the orange one here that i've got this one is actually slightly different to mine this one's got a cash strap on it rather than my version which is the clip now it really depends on what your preference is but both of them are perfectly valid and both of them are really really good and hold the money completely securely i think you can hold a little bit more cash in the one with the clip but this one may look a little bit more slim so it just depends on what your preference is there one of the best things about the Ridge wallets is just that the product quality is super, super high. As you can see, just like how thin and small this is, is basically the size of the cards that it holds within the actual wallet itself, which is awesome. It means it fits really slimly into your pocket. And with summer, you probably could be wearing shorts a bit more. It means it doesn't stick out quite as much, which I think is a nice bonus. My one looks absolutely good as new. After about six months plus of usage, there's not even really a scratch on it because it's so durable. And there's about 30 colors and styles that you can choose from, so you can pick the perfect style for you. The key case, this holds about two to six keys and you put a little pin through, you unscrew it and put it back in that makes them slide around nice and easily around the pivot point. And then anything really bulky, like an actual car key, can just fit on the keyring at the back, which is just super slimline and fits everything that you want. When I reviewed my keychain, I was carrying about 13 keys around, which was really unnecessary, and now I'm down to two, and it's really simplified my life. The Ridge team are so confident that you'll be converted that they have a 99 day test drive period after which you can get your money back if you don't love it and a lifetime warranty if you do. What's more, you can get the best offer right now at ridge.com forward slash gigaridge and use the code gigaridge to get 10% off. So that's ridge.com forward slash gigaridge to join the 50,000 strong, five-star rated proud owners of the Ridge wallet. So the flea bands left weapons like the SR25 and the 762 MDR only accessible from the traders at high cash prices, but the M1A has a great mix of both cash and barter trades available. Back in the day, you did used to see players running stock versions of the M1A with high-end ammo and a small optic on the front rail as a kind of aggro semi-auto PMC hunter back when the flea was more open, but this playstyle is kind of dead these days. The basic M1A now costs too much relatively from Peacekeeper, the barter usually isn't cost effective enough, and by the time that players have access to the better bullets in this calibre, they typically have enough money that they don't need to scrimp so hard on the base gun. With the EBR version also fairly lacklustre for the price, we're going to focus on the best version of the M1A, which is the SAS model. There are three broad ways to go about building this one up. One is the cash purchase at Mechanic 4, which at 124k, not actually too bad. One version from the barter of 18 Wilstons with Mechanic 3, which tends to come to around 100k or so. And lastly, the stripped down lower version, also from Mechanic 3, and buying everything that you need on top. If we take the cash version to compare this, buying all of the components onto the lower comes to 124k as well, so it's basically the same. However, remember that we won't actually want to buy the basic buffer tube, the grip, and the muzzle brake, so you save a small cost versus selling these back by doing it yourself. Also bear in mind that the chassis is technically Mechanic 4 if you aren't there yet in trader progression, although sometimes it's on the fleet at around the same price as the trader. One of the cool things about having the lower accessible is that you can use the M1A sustainably, i.e. if you ever get low durability from, say, rapid fire with a suppressor in a crazy raid, swapping over all of the current attachments to a new lower is super easy and only costs 33k to get back to 100 durability. This is not the case for most of the other 762 weapons, as you have to buy a whole new gun if you want your max durability to go back up. So the Wilston barter is usually the best, so long as you're looking out for them at the right price. As you can imagine, because the price of these items is low and you need quite a lot of them, it's pretty sensitive to the input price. At 5k, this makes the barter 90k, at 6k, it's 108k, and at 7k, it's 126k, so it can swing about if you aren't careful. It's also possible to make them yourself in the nutrition unit, which is nice because there's not much else great to do in there, so you don't really lose much opportunity, and it can be another way to get them for around 5,000 rubles each. But to get started, we'll look at the lowest recoil build for mechanic using the barter. Now the M1A gets to a really low recoil, and we can achieve this by adding all of the good parts. So we'll start with the muzzle brake. We're going to look at the QDC762 brake itself. Make sure it's this one, the muzzle brake kit, not the flash kit. And then we're going to add the PRS QDC on top of that. 
Then in terms of foregrips, we've got the RK2, which is the most recoil reducing one. You don't use this in practical builds, but we're going to use this just to see where we can get to. Next up, we're actually going to swap over the buffer tube that it comes with and change it to the MT Crosshair. On top of that, as usual, this will be familiar for many of my other builds. The PRS Gen 3 is the most recoil reducing you can attach to that. Now, because the chassis's already been put together for us, this gets us to the minimum recoil of 33 already, just literally with those three parts, which is kind of interesting. There's a few things that we could do for ergonomics. Now the M1A is sort of bizarre because you can't attach some of the usual grips. The best one that you can get is this one, which is finding raid only, which is the F1 Firearms, the PC, which is the paracord version. You can put on there. Now this gets you to 17 ergonomics and 33 vertical recall. You can attach front and rear sights. So we'll put the defiance on because they're the lightest put those on there and that gets you to 19 but there's not really a great deal else you can actually do with this particular build but as you can see 33 recoil is very very fearsome the next up we're going to make some optimizations to this to get a bit more ergonomics back without reducing our recoil by too too much so we're going to start off with replacing out the buffer tube and we're going to put it for the are instead which is the advanced tube from mechanic 4 and on top of this we're going to go for the moe now we actually already get this with the gun so we actually don't need to replace this which is kind of cool this just comes with the build already for the sas one we swapped it out for the prs before but now we get this for free the only thing that you need to do is you need to add the rubber butt pad on the back of here and then that gets you to 31 and 38 which is yeah we're giving up five recoil but in semi-auto does it actually matter that much and we're kind of nearly doubling the ergonomics which is pretty insane the other place that we can get some more ergo is on the vertical foregrip. I almost always swap out the RK2 and you have a choice of two really. People sometimes use the RK1 so that removes three recalls, you get three recall worse. If you get 10 ergo or the favourite that I have is the SE5. This is the one that I prefer to do so we lose five recall, we gain 16 ergonomics. And this is the way that I like to build it. I mean it really depends on your preference as to what you want to do. It doesn't make too much difference between the two but this is also slightly cheaper so I usually just go for this one. That gets us to 47 ergonomics and 43 vertical recall. So this is still insane. So still super super good but our ergonomics is way closer to 50 which i think is just much nicer to handle especially given the weight of this gun and this is unloaded by the way it's 6.2 kilograms so this gun is really really heavy so i feel like you might want a bit more ergonomics just to kind of offset some of the effects of that now one issue that you might run into is you just might not be able to buy this this thing is so expensive the paracord version sometimes it's 60k sometimes it's 30k it really depends so the next best one is actually the version without the paracord on it which is this one here and you only lose one ergonomics by going for this guy and it's on skier at 17k so this one's a sort of surefire one you're able to actually get this no matter what if we stick that on we only lose one ergonomics and this is kind of where i'd optimize it if you can't get the paracord version for some decent price it's not really worth it for that one extra ergo so we're going to go with this version and just see exactly how much this costs now it's none of these guns are cheap like meta versions of all of these weapons in this caliber are not cheap by any means but let's go and have a quick look here so we've got our list of parts and what do we actually need to buy we bought this we need to buy not this because that came with the gun didn't need this because that came with the gun as well and we go all the way down we didn't need the barrel didn't need the chassis and we also don't need the main weapon itself because we're going to get this from the barter so this is basically 140,000 rubles of parts and if you get the gun for around 100k then that's going to be 240k and then obviously you need to add an optic on top of that and some of those can be really pricey too so depending on what you choose this gun's probably going to be 300,000 rubles or something like that but i wouldn't say that this is out of the ordinary in fact for 240k for the actual base weapon like this is actually one of the cheaper versions that you can get and have it be fully meta in 762 by 51. now given this weapon is technically feasible and mechanic three and above i think one of the parts that sometimes locks people the most is the rubber butt pad if you are stuck on this piece for whatever reason you can do a really cool thing with the barter at mechanic two for the sop mod m4 basically what you do is do the two pro kills if you get that for around 130k you can pretty much just sell the rest of the gun back and get a butt pad for 4,000 rubles which is actually really neat so magazines is one area where the M1A is actually really strong. It comes with the default 20 round mag, but there's actually two others. There's the 30 rounder, which is this one, and you've got the 50 rounder, which is this one. Now this is very unusual for a 7.62x51 rifle because normally you're limited to the 20s. So this is actually really, really powerful. Most people do opt to move up to the 30 rounders because you only get a three ergonomics hit versus the 20s and 50% increase on your mag capacity, which is honestly really good. Another option is the 50 rounders. These are relatively pricey and they do hit your ergonomics by another 11 on top of what the 30s already do so that even takes our optimized build down to 32 but this can be kind of interesting for say a solo player who's fighting against squads or if you're in a, another team and you're kind of fire support and there's uh, somebody else who's got a slightly more ergonomic gun who like leads the charge something like that 
This one can actually be bartered for one of the Geiger counters with Mechanic, but they kind of float in price along the fleet because it can't be bought honestly directly. And so this one pretty much just goes with the market. Sometimes they're cheap, sometimes they're expensive. And this is often sometimes why the Geiger counters are so pricey when you want to sell them because of this particular barter. In terms of ammo and mag stacking, I'm pretty much only using M61 at this point because the gun is so expensive, it kind of justifies it. And you'll just butter through everybody if you're using it. I don't use exclusively M61 because that means if you die a few times, you'll really run low on your stock. So typically I'm using 10 in the top and then 20 M80s or M62s underneath. It doesn't really matter for what you use as your filler, just buy what you can from the traders and then use M61 on the top and keep packing it on top every time you run low on your magazines so that you get the best performance. So next up, let's have a look at how it performed like this in a few of the raids. I'm dip at the back. Oh my word! That smarts. Usually if you wait here this long, there's normally somebody who comes, but... Feels good to watch someone who not complains about the game 24-7 while it's in beta. Oh, we got him. HC. Let's go. Keep quiet. Silence. Ah, oh, bloody flashlights. <laughs> they are extremely uh, fun to play against. Oppo has been so good. Vertex and Cough DMs. Oh, there's somebody in there. Oh, there's actually over there. Oh my god, let me up. What? I said the whiskey mix and whiskey 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 mix.
What the hell was that? <laughs> What's this guy on about? That was hilarious. Oh man. That's funny. Miskivitz, Zivitz, Zivitz, Givitz, Zivitz. Miskivitz, Zivitz. Oh, look, he's got the, the chonk M1A as well. Dude's level 70. Holy, holy moly. Look at these people with the huge levels. Insane. I think that's the highest level I've, I've had this wipe. Manages full time stream, that's why he's 70. It's the whiskey mixer. Mixes whiskey behind his whiskey bar. You have to say this three times faster in the German language. Funny alternative words come out. Oh, I see. It's a tongue twister. Gotcha. That makes sense. Oh, his name is Vas Illy. Ah, okay. Mr. Mans was quiet. Because you can tell the difference between the flash and they go off really fast too. So they give you slightly less sort of like grace period. You know what I mean? Like the beauty is that like people hear the nade or they hear the pin pull or whatever. And then they're like, oh, oh. And everyone's waiting for the explosion to go off before they kind of do their next thing. Whereas flashes, they have such a short... That's not going to count, unfortunately, but these, this spawn really sucks. Spawn's actually just a joke. <laughs> ah! Maybe their teammate was AFK? <laughs> well, that was mad. So as usual, a big shout out to all my patrons, hit all the buttons if you enjoyed the video, and as always, have fun in your raids.